Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today we are going to be showing you the unboxing and setup for the Roku streaming stick. Now, Roku has become my favorite way to view all of the apps on my TV. Now, I have smart TVs in my house, I have an Android TV, but I will say that Roku just has by far the most apps. And you can clearly see it just because they're always the first to have all of the apps as soon as they come to TV. However, you can say that sometimes people um, say that, oh, well, it looks a bit dated now, but it's very simple and I get it. They're trying to cater to both sides, the easy to use side and the difficult side. So let's go ahead and first unbox it, show you what you get in the box, and then we will set it up with my TV and show you how that works. So. This is it, it's just the stick itself. And this is the entire Roku right here. So it plugs into an HDMI, you do have a reset button, and you have this, which you need to charge it. Now one important thing to note is if you want to plug it into the TV or if you want to plug it into a wall outlet. Now the benefit of plugging it into a wall outlet is that this won't shut off when you turn off your TV. If you do plug it into your TV, it will have to restart every time. So it'll be a little bit slower to turn back on your Roku when you turn on your TV. So take with that which, which one you want to do. And here we have the remote. So let's have that off. And now the big reason why I got this, because I actually have an old Roku that was just fine. One of the main reasons I got this was because of the ability to actually control the volume on the remote. Now I did have a addition called a side click, which I'll leave the link in the description down below for that one if you have an older Roku. But one of the big things about this one is that you have everything you need right here. I like the button layout bigger too. The play button is actually a lot bigger, which is nice. So I can actually feel it out at night if I'm uh, watching it in our bedroom. And you can actually uh, have the voice command. So really nice overall. And why did I get this one instead of the 4K version? Well, in my bedroom, it's still a 1080p TV and I don't plan on upgrading that to a 4K anytime soon. You know, I have my 4K for my office and for my living room. Don't really need it for my bedroom, I'm fine with it. And you know, we have like a 48 inch, I think. So not bad at all. For that purpose is why I didn't get the plus version. Now the plus version costs 20 bucks more. And if you do have a 4K a TV and HDR, that's what the one you wanna get. But if not, save the 20 bucks and get this one. So I did notice that they also changed, I feel like they change these uh, every couple of months uh, who their affiliates are. So uh, Netflix, which I have, and the other three I don't. So I'll just be watching Netflix. I wish uh, YouTube was back here. Um, I did like when YouTube was there. So I watch Netflix, YouTube, and then like my wife watches Korean dramas and different things like that, so yeah. All right, so here is the cable. Again, connected to your TV or to the wall. I'll be connecting it to the wall and then your batteries. And then we will show the setup process on how to make this all work. Okay guys, so now we're gonna show how to set it up. So when you first start, let's just choose your language. So you're just gonna choose which language you're using. And now it's looking for wireless networks. So as it looks for wireless networks, we are going to hit ours. So that is right there. And then we're gonna put in the password, so. All right, now that we put in our password, just gonna hit connect. And now it's going to connect to the proper locations. Now, as it connects to your internet, you do have to create a Roku account generally. Now, it's up to you if you do wanna do it right away. It looks like we need to update for this one as well, so let's go ahead and get that started. But with the Roku account, you will need a, another device, whether it be your smartphone, or where it be your laptop or a tablet, you need another device to set it up, sign into that, and then it will sign into here automatically. Kind of like when you sign into a specific channel that you wanna see on here, it's gonna be the same kind of concept. So really nice and easy after you get past that step, but you do need to get through that step in order to set it up. Now this update is taking a little bit of time, but as you see, it's probably gonna be about two minutes. It's gonna have it start up and then restart again. So that'll take a little bit of time. So we'll go and have it restart and then start again. 
Okay, so now that it restarted, it's saying, hey, what do you want this quality to be? It will detect it automatically. So for me, it did detect that I have a 1080p TV and it does support HDMI 1.4. So we're gonna hit OK automatic on that. And now it will change the resolution, which was at 720p, now to 1080p. And then it's gonna ask you to hit, yes, the screen looks good. And now it's all set. Now, the other thing that this new Roku device that the other one didn't have before is it has the power and volume key. So you're gonna be able to control your TV with that. Yes, the music is playing. And yes, the music stopped playing. And now I can already control it. So my guess is it figures it out through the HDMI uh, connection, which TV you have, which is really nice. And now it already works with the volume up and down. No programming needed, which is really awesome. And now this is the part that I told you about. You need to go to the website in order to set this last part up. So now I'm going to do that on my phone and then connect to this. All right, so now that we signed in through the phone, it is automatically downloading every app that I had before on my past Roku, which is nice. So as you can see, I had about 54 channels on my last Roku, so now that's what it's doing right away. Again, the main thing I love about this new Roku is the fact that it's really good signal for Wi-Fi compared to the last year's model, and it has the built-in volume rocker for the audio, which is just a really nice feature to have. So for that reason, I definitely recommend switching and upgrading to the new Roku, if just for those two things alone. And definitely, if you do have a 4K one, you do want the $20 more version, both links will be in the description down below for each version. Thank you guys always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.